Thank you for coming back to another episode of the Tony Montana channel. Um, this will be, I guess, a part two of my video, um, People 101 Introducing a New Pup to the Pack. I'm um, actually, this is going to be a supplemental video for that. Um, I, I was reading Mr. Marcus and Cool Beans 1203 uh, messages, comments on the video, and I thought maybe it would be uh, helpful to rather than just answer them, answer this as a whole. So I am going to read what Mr. Marcus said. I don't get it. I have a new game bread puppy. So if I socializing with my other three dogs really well, it will start getting along with all the dogs in the neighborhood. Or will it be only cool with the three dogs in my house and not the other animals in the neighborhood? That's a good question. Uh, Mr. Marcus, really that uh, as a puppy, the puppy is beginning to, um, the puppy will, at that stage, if he learns that the dogs in the house are now friendlies and you take her out, again, it all depends on how old she is, uh, let's see if she, 17 weeks, I would say 17 weeks, you shouldn't be taking her out anyway, I, I'm very cautious when taking puppy, puppies out, don't take them out too early because Unless it's just rain, you know, I, I do tire myself, it just, if it just rain, everything's kind of like clean, the floor, the grass, because these, they are babies, so you don't want them to put something in their mouth, which they more than likely will, or lick it, or, or something that way, because they're in the stage of uh, uh, discovery. I, I won't take them out at that age, I would take them out right, a few months into him for five six months six months would be uh, the early i would take her out plus you don't want to be walking with the puppy and a big dog comes and attacks it you know so i usually when i do take out the puppy i'm taking a, a grown dog with the puppy and uh that way if something happened I, the grown dog could take care of, of the situation but um the question answer is the puppy at that age if you um if you learn that the dogs in the house are okay then uh then she at that age she may try to see if the other dogs in the neighborhood that approach her or him are okay as well that doesn't mean that it will because in in like i said before he will uh, look at the dogs in the house differently as when when it's grown than the animals outside the house. The animals inside the house, they're like, they're hands off kind of, if you told them right. Um, they're part of the pack and again, always about, don't let them, uh, don't don't let them, uh, uh, how, is, how you say this? Don't uh, don't let them rank themselves. You rank, you make sure you don't allow that to happen. Don't, uh, those posturing or, 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 or or trying to mount the puppy, don't allow that, don't allow that, that is just dominance, trying to uh, assert their uh, rank in the in the pack, and I would say the puppy should always be, um, sick, uh, be second in command uh, after you, and they should understand that the puppy is second in command un until pretty much they get used to each other, and then they, that won't happen, that won't be an aggression. Now, you also mentioned something about the tail, and also Cool Beans mentioned it as well. Let me um, read that part. Uh, let's see. Uh, bro, she's 17. This is Mr. Marcus talking. Bro, she's 17 weeks old, and she's becoming a real handful. Also, I was going to ask you about her tail. Always little, like a little scorpion, LOL. Except when she sees me, as she gets super happy and wants to play. Other than that, it would like, it would like, it, so, sorry, other than that, it looks like a fixed scorpion tail. I got to send you a picture. Well, Mr. Marcus, that scorpion tail you mentioned, here is a rule of thumb for you and uh, Cool Beans 1203 that, uh, <clears throat> that I'm going to address basically the part that Mr. Sorry, Cool Beans 1203 was answering Mr. Marcus about that tail. And I, I'm sorry, um, Cool Beans, but you are incorrect in, in this statement. So I'm going to read the statement, and I'm not making fun of anything. I'm just, this is educational, okay? Please don't feel offended. 
Here it goes. Uh, a few old timer believe that if the tail is crooked up like a C, they say that stands for curve. Uh, again, uh, no, that is incorrect. That act actually, that is the opposite. If it's just think about it this way, anybody, the higher and, and forward the tail and ears are, uh, the more uh, these are the things that you could think of. Uh, you could think of confidence, and this could be progressive. So I'm going to zoom in progression: confidence, dominance. And aggression okay when the tail and the ears are uh, or when the ears will be back the tail will be uh, lower than the back or all the way into in between the legs that is uh, I guess you would consider that is a submissive trait or submissive traits that is showing submission or yeah, and that could be okay, especially if they, you know, um, when they look at you or they deal with you as a human, the ears maybe just literally just go back from being assertive. They have all the dogs, they have the, for example, they're defending, uh, they're eating and they're dogs around, the ears will be uh, forward and, and they'll be more like intense. But when you, they see you or you come in, you, they should just switch back at least for a second. You know, ear back and you know, face changes for a second. That's just showing you, you're, you know, they're submissive to you. So, um, I'm not sure what the other dogs are in your pack, uh, um, Mr. Marcus, if they're also American People Terriers. Um, and also, I'm not sure if the other American People Terriers that you have, or the other dogs, went through the same system. Um, obviously, you're seeing sounding like the other dogs get along together. So if that's the case, that's definitely a good thing. If they don't get to, along together, then you have to be a, a bit more careful. More careful because you, you are still learning how to um, read animal, like the animal language, the body language. So uh, you have to be extra careful. Uh, again, the puppy showing that up that way, especially, that that is a good thing. That is that, that is showing confidence, you know, that is showing confidence. And even with the uh, the grown dogs, that would be okay. Because, again, the, uh, unless that triggers the grown dogs to put their tails up and get more intense or more uh, rigid, then, that, that, then you have to control or change the feeling of the adult dogs. Remember, you have to act like... You're the parent of that dog, and you're the alpha. So the dog kind of is like the semi-alpha until it grows up at a certain size. So it needs your protection. It needs to know that other dogs need to know that you are protecting it, and that they're protecting, uh, messing with it, mounting it uh, is out of the out of the question. Now, don't confuse messing like you know aggressiveness or aggressive being you know, dominant with playfulness you know some things like uh when a dog uh starts hitting the ribs of the puppy with the, the top of the nose kind of like or, or or jabbing the front of the nose or the the, the, the muzzle close obviously and pushing it that way these are um so show, it's showing some sort of uh, willingness to look into play in, in a sort of, uh, you know, active matter. So it's kind of anting the uh, puppy to become more active and, and go after him, things like that. But you, again, if you're new to this, you have to be extra careful. And you, if you always uh, uh, um, decide on the side of caution. And uh, um, again, the adult folks should not have a tail up, hair up, on the back of the of the dog, the tail should be uh, either parallel to um, to the back or parallel to the floor, rather, uh, or um, a little lower, or it could be a little higher because if, if a little higher also shows a little bit of excitement seeing a new a new animal there, like hey, you know. But I will definitely say 
that in institution, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in, uh, in my original video, but if you're, if you're to, uh, again, introducing the puppy, you know, before you do that, you know, get that the puppy, get the pup, the puppy should have your scent all over the door. It should be like reeking with your odor. To what extent I've done it, I, I, I've done it to the extent that if, if I have uh, 20 armpits, yes, I put some of that sweaty armpits on the puppy all over it. Especially the parts that I know the, the grown dog will smell because when they smell him, they will also smell me because they don't, if, you know, it's, it's body odor is something that they can detect easy. So I, the armpit smell is going to be like concentrated you smell with your, you know, with your scent. So you rub, rub it around the dog, uh, the puppy, and that will also continue further that, hey, you know, not, you know, be careful with this puppy. I smell my voice on him. And definitely, definitely, definitely see, let them, let the grown dogs see you playing low, uh, lowly with, uh, with your dog, with your puppy. They will be watching you. They're going to be watching you. They're going to be uh, uh, wondering, you know, they're going to be learning how to act with the puppy because the way you're showing, you know. So you do act a little bit like you would want them to show the face so that when the puppy's belly up, you know, you get in there with your head and and, 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 and with your nose, rub the chest. Obviously, that, that mimics kind of like play fighting with the, you know, and and lick them, you know, with your hand, of course, don't lick them with your mouth. Make, make, and make the sound that of licking, but slower. Because the, the slower you do it, licking, the mom licks slowly, to, you know, the head, except if they're, if they're cleaning the puppy, but other than that, the mom is licking nice and soft with the pattern and with the style, and that is very relaxing to the puppy. That is very, you know, stimulating to the brain of the puppy. Do that, especially if you got that the puppy very young. Again, again, between um, eight weeks of age and six months of age, there's an 80% development of the brain. 80% of the, the development of the brain happens between the age of Eight weeks and six months. I know a lot of uh, you folks, you know, the older, older time or people that have been in dogs for longer really don't do much with the puppies until they're like a year. But by that time, all the, uh, all the, all the brain connections that meant what would have been helpful, would have been beneficial to the adult dog, uh, since they weren't stimuli, uh, there was no stimuli. It went into atrophy. Those connections basically died off. So uh, you want definitely to, to activate as many uh, pathways as possible in between four of uh, eight weeks and six months. Get them as exposed to as much as possible. But after the, after six months, they, they really have pretty much a, a, a personality. Pretty much eighty percent of them is there. So. It is your uh, it is your responsibility, and you you know you should do this if you want the best type of dog, best dog that you can have. Get it, give them as much stimulation between the age of eight weeks and six months because that's eighty percent of the brain uh, that you're developing at that time. Okay, so um, I hope you, uh, I answered Mr. Marcus's question, and I hope that. Um, Beans, um, part of me, I, I left, I lost the number. Mr. Bean, I uh, also got what um, my clarification on the tail. All right, and you can look, you can go and Google this. You know, this tail of, of dog language. You know, sit down and, and watch it. This is going to help you guys tremendously. Anyway, uh, Tony Montana, taking part of the uh, People 101. Uh, raising uh, uh, raising a puppy along other animals in your house. Okay, I forgot the name of the title. No, at one front. But anyway, this is Tony Montana. Until next time.